What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're jumping into the new combined arms operation in Halo Infinite. With the release of Halo Infinite Season 5, 343 had announced a new way we were getting free content in major events. Instead of standard fracture events, we're now getting operations. Instead of just one week, we're now getting roughly a month long of playlists and 20 tiers of free content to incentivize new and old fans to jump back into the battlefield. Does the combined arms operation get you excited to jump back in? Let's break down the full release and discuss whether it's worth playing. But before we get to the rest of the content, if you like these quick news update types of videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. First things first, we need to address the content. I love the whole aesthetic of the Spartans working alongside the Covenant or just aliens in general, giving off a unique art style that is just different than what we're used to. Having basically a plethora of different armors and color schemes as well as emblems that just kind of give off a military grade or a collection of different vehicles gives me good vibes, especially when it comes to this type of free content. 3 for 3 is now going in the right direction in the fact that they are now giving us a lot more content, feeling more like a more bang for your buck kind of a deal. Now, I was definitely one of those people that was questioning whether or not we should even have an incentive to use credits to buy or even fast pace our usage of this new operation and its content. And to be honest with you, I think this is probably one of the kind of worser components of this new update. I think the fact that we're getting a plethora of new armors and emblems is a great thing to see. But what gets me nervous is the fact that when we start seeing incentives, having to pay $5 to get access to this new set of armors, for an unlimited amount of time or hell you can pay 2000 credits which is the equivalent of $20 to automatically buy through all of this work just gets me nervous mainly because the fact is if 3 for 3 starts to find out that they can make a crap ton of money off of these types of policies then all of a sudden we might just start seeing this stuff more often and I'm not a fan of that I think 3 for 3 is going in the right direction of giving us more free content and you can grind for this type of stuff but the more kind of incentive based methods of having to to pay money directly to three for three instead of just playing the game is definitely not a good look for me but i think probably the best aspect of this update is the fact we're getting this halo 3 refuel playlist now the entire purpose of the playlist is to basically bring back some classic map from the original halo 3 game and kind of give a freshening or revamped version of them back in this game. And a lot of times people would say that it's very difficult to kind of match the aura or the mystique of some of these classic maps, mainly because they were just so original and fun back when they were first created. And it's really difficult to kind of match that level. But damn, I gotta tell you, these maps are absolutely stunning. Having a collection of possibly the greatest grouping of Halo 3 maps combined into one playlist is honestly unbelievable. We're having a remake of Guardian, The Pit, Cliffside, which is basically Lookout, Domicile, which is Construct, Narrows, High Ground, which is honestly stunning, Isolation, and a brand new map, Critical Dew Point. Now, I roughly had experience in each one of the maps to this point, and I gotta say, they are all fantastic. What I really love about them is not only do they bring back a lot of the key points of interest when it comes to the originals, but they also even make some modifications so that it kind of freshens the map enough where you want to just go back and test out and see are they really as good as what everyone's saying or better yet do they feel better than the original game because remember when you get an old map it's hard to match the same feel mainly because it's a new game with new mechanics hail 3 obviously didn't have sprint it didn't have clamber it doesn't have any of these other weapons or or collection of equipment so it's hard to kind of match the same level but when we see a recreation of these maps they actually fit perfect guardian still feels fantastic but there's actually some added kind of different ways to navigate and attack which i think is great to see the pit is essentially identical to the original because we've actually already seen the pit remake into halo infinite so it's kind of not that far off but i think the aesthetic of the original gets a lot of fans excited and happy that they're bringing that back lookout i think is possibly one of the most updated mainly because they actually have a lot of added features, especially when you see inside the cliffside, it lets you get to certain areas of the map without having to get pinned down in the open space, which I think is a great addition. Boundary was pretty damn good. I enjoyed almost all these maps, especially Narrows with how realistic or really just how adapted it's changed over the, over this entire time. But the most beautiful one was Hygra. I mean, this one, 
as like the best facelift of all the maps so far, mainly because the way that the new Halo Infinite's graphical fidelity and the ability for it to be super realistic and its approach to map making, I think it's just been super impressed. And I think that if they continue making maps like this in Forge, then I'm just excited to see what they're capable of. Even looking at Critical Dew Point, it was actually like reminds me a lot of Foundry in the way that the aesthetic is. I think obviously the little green dew or green mist that kind of gives off kind of a poisonous vibe is a little bit different, but I think overall it actually fits well into this playlist of Halo 3 game modes and concepts. And kind of the little added touch at the end was the re-emergence of the Mark V armor kit. Now, when you look at the actual armor kit itself, it looks fantastic. I think a lot of people People have been saying that this is probably the best rendition of the Mark V in the current or modern day era Halo games, and it kind of fits the original Halo Combat Evolved pretty closely. But here's the negative. The problem is that you're going to give this armor kit and it costs $22 to buy and play, which is just horrible. I mean, if you're really thinking about the, the kind of the anti-consumer practices that 3 for 3 has done in the past, this is kind of matching the next level tier of how bad that this could be. Now, granted, I could say that the good thing about this is that once you do own this armor set, you essentially are, you can really customize the colors and add armor effects to it, which does make it different. And even the visors make it look different. But other than that, it's just, you're, you're just giving us old armor and then charging us the price of a DLC for one armor kit. I mean, at least then give me all the armors separately so that I can kind of customize any way I want to. I mean, that would at least give us more of a bang for our buck here. And what's crazy is obviously people are going to buy this in droves because this is the classic armor for, for God's sakes. And because of these types of practices that 343 is doing, it literally pushed this game to jump into the top 10 sales for like Xbox. And on top of that, it's jumping into like the top 20 sales on Steam for the month. It's just like outrageous to show how people are paying for these different armor pieces or collections that they had for season five. Now, granted, I think for three for three, that's that's a lot of money you're making. And it means that you should start investing more in this game. But for the consumers, for the fans, I'm like, damn, guys, you're, we're spending a lot of money on things that I wish were just either cheaper or should be free at this point. But overall, when I'm looking at this operation, I think that you should be excited to jump back into some classic maps and modes and be able to just really live in that nostalgia. I feel like that's kind of the thing that 3 for 3 is really trying to push on. The idea that you can go back and play in a lot of classic maps and modes and just feel like, hey, this is this is what Halo's supposed to feel like. And yeah, sure, there are still some issues that we have to address with 3 for 3 with the skill-based matchmaking and obviously the prices of the goods in the shop but when you're looking at what three for three has been doing recently with these operations or the new playlist and maps being added into halo infinite it's just been great i mean you got to give them a definitely a solid grade for this operation mainly because of the fact that it's giving us maps that we always wanted to see return back into Halo Infinite. But the question is going to be whether or not they keep these maps going forward or they just kind of push them away like they've done with other modes in the past. That's going to be a question when we finally see the end of this operation. But what do you think about this operation? Are you excited to jump back into some classic Halo 3 maps? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Till next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.